I'm going to talk today about the power of networks uh, and the challenge of mapping an increasingly complex world. Uh, and I'm actually going to start with the, this talk with uh, trees. Trees have really been important knowledge classification uh, systems throughout the ages as well, mapping a variety of aspects, mapping the blood ties between people, of course, and even mapping, of course, the species, the very species in the planet, and again, using the tree metaphor on and on and on. This widespread metaphor, it's so, so, so popular because it really expressed this human desire for order, for symmetry, for hierarchy, for simplicity, for balance and unity. Trees are really an embodiment of the simple way we like to look at the world. In my view, we are really in this turning point uh, from trees to networks. We are really facing a paradigm shift, a paradigm shift in the sense that trees are not, no longer able to really accommodate the inherent complexities of the modern world. So no more we have this you know, extremely simplified predator versus prey diagrams, right? We are understanding our ecosystems in a much more complex way. This is a diagram of all the species that interact with cod, actually close to 100 species interacting with, with cod in the, off the coast of northeastern Canada. And you can really see, actually cod is right in the middle, uh, you can actually hardly see because of the, 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 the mass of lines, but it's kind of incredible, the amount of uh, interactions that exist within those, those species. Again, this complexity of ecosystems that we have around us. We also see these problems of organized complexity in the way we try to decode our own brain. So, you know, before we used to think about the brain as this modular, centralized organ where a different area was responsible for a given set of actions or behaviors. It's kind of appealing to think about the brain as a central element responsible for a variety of, of actions. But of course, it's not central at all. The more we realize that, you know, our brain is really almost like a music symphony played by hundreds and thousands of instruments. This is we also see these, these problems of organized complexity in the way we categorize knowledge. This is one of the most beautiful trees rep representations. This was created for the French encyclopedia, uh, the biggest encyclopedia at the time, created by Diderot and d'Alembert, you know, the, the big sort of encyclopedia of, of enlightenment. This really represents that enlightenment in many ways. But even though it was brilliant at the time, 1751, it really represents knowledge as a, tr as a tree, where branches don't really touch each other, right? I mean, they touch in the diagram, but they, no, they don't. They have no connections. They have no ties between them. It's individual branches that branch off, and no, there's no connection whatsoever. In comparison, you can actually see here, these are two maps of Wikipedia. And Wikipedia, of course, all of you know, it's, it's really one of the largest rhizomatic structures ever created by man. You can really understand that, you know, by looking at these maps, and of course using Wikipedia, as we have done probably several times already, that knowledge is really highly interconnected, is, you know, just like a network, really. I mean, you can actually see here some topics like mathematics and others, and they have immense connections with other disparate uh, areas of knowledge, apparently disparate, but sharing a lot of ties. This is a map of online social collaboration between Perl developers. And Perl is a very famous programming language. And here you can actually see thousands of of people collaborating in, in a variety of projects and you know, sharing this you know, very network structure, which is the opposite of, of, again, any sort of hierarchy. There's no leader per se. They just freely collaborate online uh, to achieve a, a given project. Even more than the idea of, of representing these complex systems is the need for new way of thinking. And this new way of thinking is about this pluralistic way of thinking, that everything is interconnected, everything is interdependent. We're almost going back to the polymath, you know, the Renaissance man mentality that, you know, it's not just about being a specialist in one area, you need to know a little bit of everything. Or at least create outbound ties that are, you are able to learn from other disparate areas. And I think this is the most beautiful aspect of knowledge that we can take into consideration by looking at this network thinking.